All right, guys, here is the third and final vehicle that I will be customizing, at least until the other vehicles come out, whether that's the Summit or I level up higher in the pass and can use the KTM, which is the next vehicle. But until then, I will be showing the Jaguar E-Type Series 1 convertible. Let's go to the customization. Arriving to the customization, let's see what colors that can go on this vehicle now. It seems like a lot of them do look pretty awesome. Um, kind of like in... Uh, that looks pretty cool. The blue color is also nice. Let's go with uh, let's go with this. I'm actually going to customize the thing right now. Obviously, livery is not going to put those on it. Let's see what we could do to the visual parts here. So if you want more lights, pretty cool customization. They're probably not going to put any of those on it. Let's check out the front bumpers. Okay, then yeah. See, I'm not going to put that on either. That just doesn't. Yeah, no. It looks like the fenders, you make it a little bit wider. Actually, wait, does that get wider? Yeah, so it looks like it gets a little bit wider there. And even wider. Okay, so you make this thing like a super wide body. Kind of cool. I might leave it stock, although that does look pretty cool. Doesn't really... Ah, why not? I'll put it on there. All right, rims. Looks like there's some stock rims there you can put on. These are all stock, it looks like. Um, Let's go with those. You put side mirrors on, obviously, because it doesn't have any currently. Go with those. And the rear fender, go with that. Actually looks like pretty cool once you do that. And you can actually put a hood on it, which is pretty okay then. So this is rear wing. So you can put that on it there, and then that, and then that. Personally, I'm probably going to go with this one. Rear bumpers. It looks like the exhaust, side exit exhaust there. Well, let's see the stock one first. Stock one's like that. So maybe we could do... Yeah, let's do that. And interior color, obviously. Probably just going to leave stock there. And then, obviously, if you have vanity items, you can throw those on if you own them. Depending on what you want to put on there. I won't avoid, I'll probably avoid these tires, to be honest. Um, although that does look pretty cool. Let's put that on there, actually. And then, uh, how about we go drive it and see how this thing drives now? All right, guys, arriving outside with the E-Type. Now, obviously, this thing looks pretty awesome. Uh, not gonna lie, I kind of like how it's set up here. It actually looks like a really cool-looking car. Let's start it up. Check out the interior. Looks pretty awesome. Let's go drive it. So, acceleration seems pretty decent. Obviously, the car is older, but the car looks really good. Um, I love classic cars like this. So, let's see how it drives. So, it is a four-speed, which is good. If you're one of the manual type guys and you like shifting the car, you don't have to shift it 40 times in this game, which I don't really mind doing, but sometimes it gets a little frustrating. I think on the race you're Let's see what the top speed is right now. So, 245 is top speed there. Pretty impressive. But this car, I mean, it seems like it was, I was actually handling that turn really well, so I was kind of impressed there with that. Um, car seems like it's driving really well. I'm actually going to take this on the sleeper race right now, and let's see how it does there. All right, guys, in the race now, let's see how this thing drives. So obviously the build I have on this car, which I will show at the end of the video, um, I did fail to put that in my Porsche video there, and I'm sorry. Let me know if you actually want the build of the Porsche. I can post that. Um, it, like I said, this thing is obviously handles pretty well with the build I have on it. Um, so speed-wise... So when it comes to the four-speed vehicles and you're in manual, I notice you guys are going to want to... It's kind of hard to get used to. I was doing it a little bit with the Beetle. You'd sometimes downshift and you'd be going way too slow. And sometimes your car would be bogging a little bit and you'd be redlining really hard. So do keep in mind that you're in four gears there when you're driving in manual in this game. And you probably won't go under gears too much. And I did totally just speed out of that. Okay, now we're back on the road. Uh, let's see how this thing handles around these tight turns here. It'd be good. So obviously it depends how fast you're going. Uh, this car actually handles very well with this build. Um, kind of like how it's looking too. The wide body looks good. Um, acceleration seems to be in a good area there for the car that it is at least. Um, if this car is required in a specific race in the Summit, which probably will not happen mainly because the Summit is not going to use a motor pass vehicle like that. It will not require you to buy the motor pass, which is a good thing. So you won't need to worry about that. Um, but if you do own this vehicle and it's no restriction, you give this car a shot on one of the races. Who knows, it might do pretty well. 
handles pretty good. It seems like it has good speed. Um, sometimes the four gears actually could be a good thing. You don't have to shift a lot. Um, just know what gear you're in at least and know where your RPMs are there so you don't go under. I do that with the beat a lot in previous summits with that thing. Uh, like I said, this car is, um, so far it's kind of impressing me actually for what it is. Like, I just did it right there actually. Went right back to sec first instead of second. Uh, realizing you have four gears, you can do it more often than you actually want to. Um, but for the most part, this car seems to be doing a pretty good job of handling its own in this race. Um, obviously, this is not really saying much considering I'm on the hardest difficulty. And the NPCs are normally pretty easy to beat in these races. Um, but if it comes to PvP, not sure on that if I would drive this. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I do not do PvP in this. But when it comes to other things, this car seems like it's doing a pretty good job. A cool thing to see because, well, we have the other old Bugatti that was added, which is also a very awesome car. And seeing this car in that class as well would be pretty cool. It's just an old classic vehicle, and I can't drive. Back to whatever I was doing. Um, now going back to first person driving this thing a little bit. Didn't really do it too much before. Let's see how it looks in first person here. Excuse my terrible driving at times there. So obviously in first person the car looks cool. It's got the old steering wheel, obviously. Uh, interior looks very nice in this car, and they did a great job with the detail of it, which is really nice. And that'll pretty much do it, guys. I have to say, if, well, if you're getting the pass, you'll be able to pick this thing up level 13. Um, I recommend going after it, leveling up the pass. Again, this car, definitely a cool addition to have, especially if you have the old Bugatti as well.